Welcome back to the VLC YouTube channel. Uh, it was a rough week last week for me. You know, as a Notre Dame fan, I was two and three in my picks. Just was rough. You know, the the whole Notre Dame experience, going to the game, watching that live, it, it was rough to watch. Uh, so I'm going to get into that in my picks this week. Kind of just going to condense it for this week and, and kind of hone in on Notre Dame and just hone in my picks. Let's jump into it. Third down. Like I said, look, it, it was a rough week, Notre Dame fan, right? We should have beat Northern Illinois. It was tough to sit in the stands and watch that. It was like it's like watching your dog get shot, uh, your dog get ran over by a car. It was like attending a funeral. It, it was rough. There was no energy. There was nothing to the team that made you think, we can win this game at any point. Come out of halftime, Jeremiah Love, you know, hurdles, touchdown, you think maybe some energy, you know, blocked field goal, and then it's like you get a stop to force them to a field goal, and then another blocked field goal, game over, there's nothing exciting. Offense played terrible. The defense, the defense didn't play great, right? Like, from a scale of giving up, you know, the points that they did, not terrible, but they got gashed in the run game. They allowed big plays to Northern Illinois. Credits Northern Illinois. They came out and they won. Their coach had a great game plan of a not scared mentality. Do not back down. Even though it's Notre Dame, we can come in here, we can win this game. That's what happened. And Marcus Freeman and, you know, the team were not ready. You know, they came off the big win against Texas A&M. You're like, okay, 12-0, 12-0. They fed into it more than anybody else. That's a problem. And, and that's why I think the bigger story here and, you know, what in now the third year of the Marcus Freeman experience as a Notre Dame coach? I will start it with saying I love Marcus Freeman as a, as a person, as his excitement, what he brings to it, his recruiting style. I, I, I just love everything about him. He was such a great fresh start from Brian Kelly. But you can't lose these games, right? Like I can give you Marshall in your first year, Stanford in your first year, but you're in your third year now. You know, you're a little bit older when it comes to a coach. You have experienced coaches around you on coordinating sides, you know, Mike Denbrock game plan was terrible. You, you kind of get into this flow of like, it's kind of the same old pattern. We bring in this transfer quarterback, we think he's going to be great, and he's really not. You know, nobody on offense played great. The offensive line played terrible. Wide receivers couldn't get open. You know, the running backs weren't the best because the offensive line kind of struggled. Riley Leonard struggled just throwing the ball, simple throws. He missed some guys. It, it was rough. The, the interception, you know, with like six minutes left was the dumbest play. It's second and one. Run the damn football. It, what, what irritates me with Notre Dame, and, and as a Notre Dame fan, I've watched it now for 25 years. It, it, it's just it, every year it happens. I think it's like the curse since we fired Lou or made Lou retire. You know, it's just been that curse. But it's just the same old, same old, right? Like, the game plan towards Sex a and was completely different than this week, and I get the teams are different, but if you're still trying to figure out the offense, Riley Leonard can run the ball. Why did you not run him as much? You're playing guys that didn't play the game before. Don't play them unless you're up. So I think it's, it just goes into now as Marcus Freeman's a guy. Now you move forward, right? Now you have 10 games left. You're 1-1. One and one. You're not totally out of it with the 12-team playoff. You can be 11-1. The schedule is easy, like we thought. We thought it was easy. Now it got a whole lot harder because of where we're at. And now you lose a game that you shouldn't lose. Now you have a game on the road against Purdue. What are you going to do? How do you respond? You know, quarterback controversy. To me, I, I, you know, there was a lot of fans yelling Frangelli in that game. And to me, it's like you put Steve in there, he's going to get sacked 50 times. At least with Ryan Leonard, you can run around a little bit. To me, I get to the point where I almost want to see the young guys play, like almost play C.J. Carr. But I, I still want to give Riley Leonard another game or two, give Denbrock another game or two to figure out what they're going to do. I think they're going to come out and play much better against Purdue, even though I think it will be tight. It's a rivalry game. They haven't played in quite some time. I think Notre Dame's 10.5-point favorite. They probably won't cover. It's probably going to be a touchdown game. It's going to be gritty. But I, I think they're going to come out and they're going to respond. And then moving forward from that, I don't know. But like I said, I think the biggest thing is – Marcus Freeman, it's soul searching, right? He even said, you know, we're back at this game. We can't have this. You have you are Notre Dame. You play a team like Northern Illinois. You have to win that football game. But like I said, credits Northern Illinois. They, you know, they they came out with energy, unlike Notre Dame. That Notre Dame overlooked them and they took their opportunities and advantages and, and they did it. And it was rough to watch. Um, 
I'm not fire Marcus Freeman. I don't think that's the answer. I think you still need to give him time. He'll get another year after this one. But it's just one of those things where you have momentum. You have recruiting classes that have been well. You, you have great co- a great coaching staff. I can make an argument. This coaching staff is better than what Brian Kelly probably ever had as a coaching staff. So you, you, just, you need to figure it out. You need to sit down. And I don't know if it's in certain situations allowing Al Golden to kind of control a few more things, being a head coach. But you just you got to get the energy up. You got to one game at a time. You talk about one game, one play. You got to live by it. You can't sit here and be like it's my fault we lost the game because at the end of the day you shouldn't lose those games. You shouldn't beat Texas A&M on the road and then come back and have a letdown like this. So you need to move forward, pick it up. Um, like I said, I think Notre Dame will win this week. I think it'll be close. I think it'll be tight. But now it's pick up the pieces, figure it out, especially with the new 12-team play. If this was last year, I'd say the season's over. This year with the 12-team playoff, you still have a shot, 11-1. and one. Even if you're 10-2, and two, which that's what I thought they were going to be anyways, I just didn't think they were going to lose Northern Illinois. It was a rough one, but you need to move on, figure it out. I'm not saying fire Marcus Freeman. That's not the answer. Um, you know, as I've had more time to process it, you know, it was rough walking out of the stadium. It was. I was pretty mad. Um, I said some things to Notre Dame's president that I'm probably not happy about, and the Lord above me is probably not happy that I said it. Um, but yeah, it was one of those. It was, it was just a rough game, sitting in the stands watching that. It was just it was rough. It was like slowly, slowly watching your dog get ran over. It, it was rough. And I sat in the stands for 10 minutes afterwards. My hands, my face in my hands, just like what the hell did I just watch? It was one of those things. It was like a twilight zone. Like it was like, oh my gosh, you, you know, I never once was I really that excited other than Jeremiah loves touchdown. And then he gets the ball one more time. It, it, it was tough to watch. You gotta pick up the piece and you gotta move forward. This is college football. Now you gotta restart, rejuvenate. It's tough, but we gotta do it. Gotta have faith. I'm not gonna sit here and blow it up, even though it sucks. All right, last week my picks were not the best. I was right about Texas over Michigan. Michigan has no offense. Texas is a very good football team, very well could win the national title. And then I won Tennessee over NC State. I really like Tennessee. They just have a good team, they have a good quarterback. I just like what they built. Playing NC State, that was a no brainer for them to cover. Oklahoma State, bad beat. Iowa, bad beat. Nebraska, I didn't. Th- I thought Colorado would cover. They dominated Colorado. All right, so I have four games for this week. 7-3 on the season, 2-3 and three last week. This game is tonight, Friday. Number 20, Arizona, 2-0 at number 14, K-State. Kansas State's a seven-point favorite. I like Arizona to win outright. I don't just like Arizona to cover. I like Arizona to win outright. I think with their offense, you can kind of get in these Big 12 games are crazy. A Friday night game, this just feels like Arizona. Seven points is a lot. I think I think Arizona wins this game. Number 16, LSU, 1-1, one one, six-point favor at South Carolina, 2-0. I think this is like a noon game. It's not a night game. So it's one of those games where it's going to be a little funky. If it was at night, maybe I'd lean more towards South Carolina here. But I think LSU comes out. I think they play well. I think they cover. And I think they beat South Carolina. Number 24, Boston College, 2-0 at number 6, Mizzou. Mizzou's 2-0. Mizzou is also a 14.5-point favorite. This game is tough for me. I like Boston College to cover. Um, 14.5 is a lot of points to me, just the way Boston College, kind of the energy with Bill O'Brien, the way they played against Florida State. I think it's like an afternoon game. Just 14 and a half is a lot of points. You know, Mizzou is going to win, but do they win by 10 points? Do they win by 7 points? I think Boston College keeps it a game for a little bit, and I think that they cover. Mizzou wins, but I think Boston College covers. And then the last game, it's a very intriguing game. This is kind of the state of Florida with Billy Napier kind of game on the line. Texas A&M 1-1, one and one, minus 4 point fair at Florida, who's also 1-1. One one. Um, this game's tough. I like D.J. Lagway for Florida, the young quarterback. I think they should have started him over Graham March to begin with. Graham March is a little injured. Um, he gives them juice. He gives them some prowess. Um, but I get against the t- this Texas A&M defensive line with the young quarterback in the state Florida's in, I like Texas A&M to cover and win the game. Um, I think they win by a touchdown you know, late. It's just grinding game, but I think Texas A&M pulls away and they cover at the end. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this week's real Short, sweet, wanted to get the Notre Dame stuff off my chest. I'm sure people were wondering what I thought. Look, don't blow up the program, but you got to figure this shit out. This is not just slow times. Like you, This is real college football. You're at Notre Dame. you got pressure on you to win. You're in your third year, Mark. Like things should be different, and you lose a game like this. 
been through it before. This sucks. But there is hope with the new 12-team playoff. You can go 11-1. You restart this season with this week at Purdue. Thanks for watching.